Hey everybody, Darren Burrows here. Today I'm gonna to answer the age old question of whether you should rent or own your home in 2021. I'll cover the pros and cons of both options as well as other factors like current mortgage rates, the hidden costs of both scenarios, and a little later on, I'll actually break down the numbers and I'll show you the difference between these two options. Keep in mind, all of this advice is for those looking to rent or own as their primary dwelling. I won't be addressing buying a home to rent out as an income property. That's a whole separate video for another day. The topic of buying a home versus renting has and will always be a polarizing issue. I'm hoping by the end of this video, you'll know which option is the best for you and your situation, but it isn't as simple as buying a home is a good investment or renting is cheaper. I also want to reiterate that when it comes to any kind of real estate, you want to look at the numbers not make your choices based solely on emotion. If you're considering owning your own home this year, it's important to consider whether or not it's the right time for it. No one wants to kick themselves in 12 months because they bought quick instead of smart. Before we get into the video today, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's talk about what most people are familiar with, renting. You pay a monthly amount to lease a unit and cover certain expenses like utilities and internet. And that's pretty much where your outlays and worries end. The downside, you don't get any of that money back. It's a living expense, not an investment. But you also don't have to pay for general maintenance, such as a broken down refrigerator or replacing any bad wiring. Assuming any maintenance or repair items are the results of normal use, that's all your landlord's responsibility. But do me a favor, don't call your landlord to change out a light bulb for you. One pro to renting is generally it's less expensive. You should always check the rental rates in the area just to be sure, but with no extra expenses to consider like property taxes or paying for lawn care, it's generally the cheaper option month to month. And it's a good choice if you're still paying down student loans or consumer debt like credit cards. Another pro to renting is that you're not tied to that property. If you enjoy traveling or think you might have to move in the next few years, whether it's for business relocation or traveling the world, you'll have options to either end your lease or sublet your space to someone else, meaning you can uproot and move around much quicker and much easier. Another factor that should be considered is that if your rental unit is in disrepair or your living situation becomes unfavorable for whatever reason, you can move out and find a new place. And if you own your own home, that's not necessarily the case. Also, if you're in a rent capped market, it will be easier to budget your living expenses as your rent can only increase by the regulated rates no matter how much the landlord's expenses go up. Now onto the cons of renting. And the most obvious one is what I'm sure all of our parents have said to us at one point, which is renting is just throwing away money. Whether you rent for one year or 10 years, you won't be any closer to owning that space you're renting, but there's so much more to unpack here than just renting is throwing away money, but I'll get into that a little bit later on. Another con to renting is you can't usually modify your house. While certain agreements will allow you to make some simple upgrades and changes to your space, you'll generally have to take the unit as is and keep it as is. This means that if you wanna make any big changes like upgrading a kitchen or a bathroom, or even in some cases, something as simple as painting the walls a new color, your lease agreement may not allow it. Other negatives to consider are that if you have neighbors, you won't get to choose them. And depending on the rules and regulations, if you're an animal lover like me, you may be restricted as to who will accept your pets. What do you think of that, Ella? Hey? Eh? Mm, she doesn't care. Another factor that you'll need to consider if you're renting a building with four suites or less in it is the owner of that property has rights to inhabit the building. And if they wanna move into your suite or home, there's not much you can do about it. Some owners will use this as a tactic to increase the rents by saying they are moving into the unit to remove tenants who are paying below market rents in hot markets, which is a bit shady if you ask me and has come back to haunt many landlords. But there are many cases where this is a legitimate reason that you'll need to vacate and there is little that you can do about it. So in short, renting is generally a cheaper, more flexible option, but it's also more constrictive to your actual living experience and has no financial upside as an investment. Now for buying a home. The biggest thing to keep in mind when you decide to buy a home is remembering that it should be treated like any other investment. Like I mentioned earlier, you'll need to look at the numbers and try to avoid speculating that the property will always go up in value. While I'm a huge believer in the long-term prospects of real estate investing over any other form of investing, if you're buying a home and assuming it will go up in value and plan to sell it in a few years to capitalize on that growth, 
you could be in for a rude awakening if the market shifts or changes. Trust me, real estate is cyclical. The market will go up and down and up and down, always has and always will. And if you're stuck selling at the bottom of the market, your so-called investment could cost you a lot of money. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's look at the cons of owning a home. As a homeowner, you'll be responsible for fixing any issues that come up. And if that means paying someone else to do it, you'll be shelling out more than just the cost of the parts. Everything that happens to your home is your responsibility. If someone drives their car through your front door, your insurance will cover those kinds of repairs. But if your roof needs replacing, that's something that you'll be out of pocket for. The downside to some repairs is that they'll come without any notice. So you'll need to have some extra cash or credit available to cover anything unexpected if you don't have a reserve fund established. Owning a home is also more financially complex. You not only have to pay for your mortgage if you have one, utilities and home repairs, but you'll also have to pay property taxes and insurance. The upside for those of you that are self-employed or run a home-based business is that you may be able to write off some of those expenses. And there are ways that you can make your mortgage tax deductible as well, which again is a whole other video. But if you're interested in learning more about that, check out this video about the Smith Maneuver right here. Another unique factor that you have to consider when buying a home is the cost to acquire the home. You'll need to factor in costs such as legal fees, land transfer taxes, home inspections, financing charges, and if you're buying a new property, you may be subject to government sales tax and development charges. All of these fees vary based on location, but they should be considered because they could have an impact on the amount of money you'll need to have to buy a property, but also the amount the property would have to grow in value before you recoup those costs. Having said all of that, there can be significant pros to owning a home. And the first one is, well, it's yours. You can renovate what you want, paint it whatever color you'd like. You can have 14 large dogs and no landlord can tell you what you can and can't do both inside and outside of your home, as long as you're not breaking any laws. The biggest argument by far for owning your own home is that you're not throwing away money every single month. But what does that actually mean? Most homeowners have a mortgage, which means that you have a loan to the bank to help purchase the property. Most loans are structured in a way that you make monthly payments on that loan. Inside of that payment is interest and principal pay down. So every time you make a mortgage payment, your loan amount gets reduced. Most loans are amortized over a 25 year period. So if you make your mortgage payments for 25 years, you would not owe anything to the bank at that point. So you can see that owning a home is essentially a guaranteed savings plan. Every month you make a payment and every month your loan gets smaller and smaller. So if you're not great at saving your money, making your mortgage payments forces you to pay down the loan. But in order to access that money, you'll either need to sell the home, refinance it, or have a line of credit attached to your mortgage. In other words, the mortgage pay down is great, but it's not very liquid. The other item that is worth noting in 2021 is that interest rates are at an all time low. You can borrow money right now on a five year term at less than 2%. That's crazy. With low interest rates, this means that your payments are either smaller or more of your payment is going towards principal. The other reason why buying a home can be more beneficial is if real estate values go up over time. And while this is far from a guarantee, if you generally hold your property for any length of time, the chances of it appreciating in value are significant. So not only are you paying down your mortgage, but your home is also growing in value, which seems like it makes owning a home a no brainer but it's important that we look at the numbers before making a final determination. So let's do that. I'm going to use my Toronto condo as an example and I've simplified the numbers in order to illustrate my point. To buy my downtown Toronto condo right now, you'd have to pay me about $600,000. And if you could qualify, the bank might allow you to put 10% down, which means you need a $60,000 down payment. In addition to your down payment, you'd have to pay legal fees and double land transfer tax in order to be able to close on this property. Yeah, welcome to the city of Toronto. Screw you, City of Toronto. So essentially, you'll need another $20,000 in addition to your $60,000 down payment to be able to close on this property. You'll now have a $540,000 mortgage, so your mortgage payment will be about $2,350 per month. On top of your mortgage, you'll need to pay insurance, property taxes, utilities, and you should be setting aside money every month for repairs and maintenance. In the case of a condo, you'll have to pay condo fees, and mine at this condo are $800 a month. The good news is they include all utilities, maintenance on the common areas of the building and some building insurance. The bad news is I have no control over these fees 
and they can be raised with little to no notice. So if I factor in my condo fees, property taxes, my contents insurance, some repairs and maintenance allowance, and my internet and cable, I'll be out of pocket another $1,250 per month, bringing my total out of pocket to live in this condo to $3,500 on a monthly basis. For comparison, I'm currently renting this condo to somebody else for $2,200 a month, which includes everything, cable, internet, all utilities, property tax, all inclusive. So you might be asking yourself, well, why would you buy and pay $3,500 per month when you could rent and pay $2,200 per month? Well, we have to factor in those other two elements, which are principal pay down and market appreciation. On a $2,350 mortgage payment at 2% interest, approximately $1,500 of that is going towards your principal pay down, and the remainder is what the bank charges in interest. So even though our monthly costs are higher to own, we do get that forced savings of $1,500 a month in principal pay down, which then means the net out of pocket each month comes down to about $2,000, which is similar to renting. And this is why most people preach the buying is better than renting model. But if you were diligent enough to set aside that same amount of money each month and invest it, you could see similar types of returns that you get with owning a property, but you keep the flexibility of renting along with knowing that your fixed cost will not change too much year over year. But this is where most people fail. They're not disciplined enough to take those extra funds that would be allocated to a mortgage payment and invest them on a consistent basis. And here's the other element that we haven't mentioned, and that's market appreciation. Market appreciation is a hard one to predict. If your property climbed in value every year by 10%, it's difficult to make those kinds of returns anywhere else. But if you're investing in a property and expect those kinds of returns to happen on a year over year basis, you would have false expectations. When I analyze future values, I use a rate similar to inflation, which is about 3%. So the question becomes, do you think you can earn more than 3% on another investment, whether that's the stock market, investment real estate, or even private lending? And if the answer to that is yes, then in a lot of cases, you're better off renting than owning a property for all the reasons I've just laid out. Really, the choice is yours. And depending on your lifestyle, your discipline with saving and investing, and where you think the real estate market is heading, there are pros and cons to both approaches. Renting is a great choice if you like to move around every few years or generally just want less responsibility related to your home. Buying your home, on the other hand, makes more sense if you want a forced savings plan, you want to control your living environment, and you feel the real estate market will outperform other investments in your portfolio. But as you can see, there is not one way that is better than the other. Weigh the different factors and decide which is more in line with what you want. And now I want to hear from you. What do you think is a better fit for you this year, renting or buying? Leave a comment below and tell me what you think. You can also hit the like button below, which really helps out me and my channel and helps the YouTube algorithm place this video in front of the right audience. And if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.